I think we're all at managing our fatigue levels, our tiredness, our energy. Wish we're pretty at it. And here's my theory. My theory is because we want to get things done and we think of other people and we don't want to let people down and our lives are so busy. So instead of prioritizing ourselves or planning our energy, we just go, 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 and then we're knackered. Okay, so this vlog is hopefully gonna give you some tips that some of them, let's face it, we're all gonna ignore them, even myself and I suffer from chronic fatigue. Um, but hopefully some of them we will start to implement, you will start to implement. I've got some that I have already implemented in my life is a million times better. So let's get into it. I wanted to switch up the background, but I'm being self-aware. Self-aware is, is a big thing about managing your energy levels, managing how knackered you are, managing your fatigue. Um, I haven't got the energy to move. I've just walked all the way here. Like, it, it's my garden, but I, you know, I suffer from chronic fatigue. So today's vlog is gonna be shot here. So, self-awareness. I know I suffer from chronic fatigue, right? I plan my day. I plan my week. Um, I plan, I don't really plan more than two weeks out um, because I could have a flare up, the weather could change. We just don't know what's gonna happen. Sorry, I got distracted by it. Is that comfy? Isn't she beautiful? Um, yeah, so self-awareness. So I think reality check, if you are knackered, if you are constantly exhausted, you're suffering from fatigue, you need to be self-aware. You need to literally sit there and say out loud, I suffer from fatigue. I am knackered. And if it's really severe, you need to say to yourself, something needs to change something needs to change now self-awareness big big tip in self-awareness if you can't go about your day as you would like to because your body is saying no have you been diagnosed have they figured out what's wrong because something's wrong if you haven't been diagnosed get diagnosed i've got a separate vlog on that even when you've been diagnosed you still need to manage these tips and tricks because fatigue is what they know the least about in the world of medicine they know the least about fatigue which is for us right now, but they're working on it. So there's a light at the end of the tunnel. They're gonna figure this out. In five years time, things will be very, very different when it comes to treatment for illnesses like MS, ME, arthritis, fibro, etc. Things will be very, very different. So there's a light at the end of the tunnel. So self-awareness, give yourself a reality check, get diagnosed, very important. We all know that we are what we eat. Our body needs a certain amount of nutrition. It needs certain vitamins um, to keep going. And honestly, I I think we're all pretty but not all. A lot of us at it. A lot of us are at giving our body what it needs. Um, especially in the UK and America because fast food, how cheap, gorgeous tasting unhealthy food is and how easy it is we buy it um so we're not giving our bodies what we need so we know like we've got to be more realistic if you're suffering with your fatigue levels if you're knackered all the time this is in your control it's in our control i'm saying that like i'm talking like i'm like so it's in my control it's in your control we've got to do something about it i made a simple change was that I ordered Huel, right? It's not sponsored. I ordered Huel because in one bottle, I get all the nutrition, all the vitamins, everything I need for the day, just in one bottle. So I knew that wasn't in my diet and I feel better for it. Sometimes I only have half a bottle a day, but it's getting a damn sight more than what it was before I started having Huel. Easy way to change it. I stopped ordering takeaways. I changed, try different foods um, that is manageable for you to make so i can't cook so now i have like it's all food that i can grab there's no cooking involved at all um food it's critical you know it is anyone that's watching this is struggling with fatigue you know food is critical we need to get smarter about it outsourcing if you suffer 
from chronic fatigue, severe fatigue, get a housekeeper. Get a housekeeper. I stay, I, I clean. It's the best £23 I spend a week. A week. As soon as I miss her, like I look forward to her when she's visited, well, visiting, when she's coming to work. And when she's gone, oh my God, it's a relief. Like literally she's part way through cleaning the house. I'm walking around going, oh my God, it looks amazing. Thank you so much. I'm so happy. It's just so good. Outsource it. That's the equivalent of a takeaway. Yeah outsource it cut back on your takeaway i guarantee you the feeling you will get from having someone doing your housekeeping once a week versus a takeaway you won't go back outsource it this is really important especially if you're suffering from chronic illness achieve something every day now if you're having a really bad day where you are not able to get stay out of bed where you're in bed all day if you manage to have a wash, a top and tail wash, you've achieved something, okay? If you've managed to brush your hair that you haven't done for days, that's an achievement. If you manage to have a bath, oh my God, that's like, you're really stepping it up a level. Um, if no matter what I'm doing, like if, if I'm really ill and I manage to get dressed, that's a massive achievement. And in my mind, I know it is. But do you? If you're feeling like that, do you give yourself, like I think as humans, we're pretty shit at giving ourselves a well done. Do you literally sit there and go, I did great, I got dressed. I know it's, look, I know it's because most people don't have to blink about getting dressed, right? But if you're suffering from fatigue, getting dressed is a challenge, but you've got to give yourself credit. If you're negative with yourself all the time, your mental health's gonna decline and your quality of life's gonna decline and it's just gonna be You've got to give yourself credit. Even if you need to think about it as if, how would you, what would you say to someone else? If you, back when you were able-bodied, you know, hoping that you've had some time in your life where you've been able-bodied, if someone, if one of your friends was struggling and they were sick all the time, but that day they managed to get dressed, you would be like, that's amazing, well done. But we don't do it for ourselves very much. So now I really do give myself credit. Like I really give myself credit. Um, if I have a few, I had a few days, no, a few days, I had two weeks where I couldn't get dressed. Um, I'm still recovering from COVID. Two weeks where I could not get dressed. Um, I accepted it, I accepted, look, I'm, I'm sicker than normal, it's fine. And then when I did manage to get dressed, I knocked myself out and I'd go back to sleep again. Um, so the next day I didn't get dressed. It was a choice that yeah, I could, but then I'm gonna knock myself out for the day. So I didn't. Day after that, I managed to get dressed and stay up for a couple of hours. And I gave myself credit for it. I think I'm, since I've become a lot better at that, it's massive, massive improvement in my quality of life and my mental health. So achieve something every day, no matter what it is, and give yourself credit. This is important. Listen to me, pay attention, because I'm right. I'm right on this, okay? There's a lot of things that I'm wrong on, but this one I'm definitely right, okay? Boy. Right, I've been wanting to do this for weeks, okay? He needs a trim. Good view, come in. God, I needed your butt, proper bum. I'm so sorry, that was too close, wasn't it? Sorry. That was like, practically went over his bum. Sorry. Come here. Look, he's it's not looking the professional cut. I'm gonna have to stop now. I leave him with the mohawk. This is for the rain, because this is waterproof, yeah? So, and I totally screwed up his bum, but I won't show you that. He doesn't want to show that. And I probably do. You don't want to see it. Look at the sexy mohawk on this cat. Look at you. You're nearly ready for like the cat version of Crufts. If you have a illness, if you've been diagnosed with an illness that is the root cause of your fatigue levels, for example, arthritis, one inflamed joint can give you fatigue levels of the equivalent of COVID or severe flu, just one joint. And I run with on average, excluding ribs and vertebrae, I run on average 26 inflamed joints and 11 swollen. So my fatigue levels, you know, my energy levels are, uh, 
well, it's not very good. So meds. If we treat my arthritis and I have less inflamed joints, it means I have more energy. So treatment, your meds is critical. If my pain levels are high, I'll take pain relief. Being in pain itself is exhausting. For those of you that suffer with pain, oh God, you are not, I, I get it, I feel you. It's, it's so tiring. And if you don't get pain relief, speak to a specialist, not a GP, not a general practitioner, a specialist. GPs are general practitioners. No disrespect to GPs, they are fantastic. They're first line of defense. You need to speak to a specialist. If I followed the pain relief program from my GP, I wouldn't have any pain relief. I would have zero quality of life. I wouldn't be able to work. I certainly wouldn't be able to do this because I'd be because their goal is to get people off pain relief because of an issue years and years ago with like tramadol and etc. Like you can Google that. Shit. So I get it. But if I speak to my specialist, he's like, yes, you need pain relief. So work with your specialist, not your GP, and use your meds. But again, you have to be strategic and pace yourself. Pace yourself. Pace yourself. Plan with your meds and the weather. <laughs> Like, it's beautiful. I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good because there's no major changes in the weather. It's not hot or cold, it's pressure changes that f up arthritis. This is a bit of CBT stuff, right? And this is important. And I'll probably put this in every single vlog I do with hacks and tips and everything for chronic illness and whatever we're talking about. Have something to look forward to. Because I'm pretty f***ed up, um, my something to look forward to is it's my birthday on it's Wednesday today. My birthday's Friday. I cannot wait to have a strawberry gatto. One pound fifty. Yeah, it's one pound fifty. It's f***ing lush. It's lush. I'm looking forward to it. That's my thing. Um, try to make it not too food orientated because most of us that are suffering with chronic illness can't really. We're not very not a very mobile group, so we don't need to eat as much as well. We would we would like because we get fat um so it's, i try not to keep it food um uh the new minions film i'm really looking forward to it and i've saved it for the weekend um to watch it um something else i'm looking forward to is i'm gonna go to um a little garden center that is literally the garden center is only as big, big as this garden it's smaller than my garden right so the walking doesn't f me up. I have to have someone go with me because I can't drive myself. I'm not fit to drive at the moment. I can't f carry anything, um, but I'm still excited. And I will probably spend, but I don't go there very often. So I'll, honestly, I'll probably spend like 20 quid. Maybe I'll vlog it. It's probably gonna be like 40 quid. Um, but that's my, that's my big something to look forward to. So when I think when you're, if you can have big things to look forward to and you're physically able to do them, great, right? But if you're struggling with chronic... Oh my God, I thought I saw a dragonfly. Oh, if I'd have seen a dragonfly, I'd have been so excited. It just must have been a slow fly. <laughs> anyway, I'd like, I'd like a dragonfly. That's what I would like. I, that's my something to look forward to. Um, what was I, I was going to say? Yeah, with, um, with the chronic illness, I try to not... Try to not have things to look forward to that are high risk of me cancelling. For example, going to the cinema. I never ever plan that, would never plan it because because of my fatigue levels, I haven't been to the cinema in years. Years. Because I can't plan it. I can't plan the energy. I can't be fit enough at a certain minute of the day to do something let alone transport, let alone getting dressed to go out, let alone carry, no, it's too much. So when I plan things to look forward to, I plan things that I can, can control. Um, and then like, for example, the, I've got the minions to watch. No, no. Something for me to look forward to. Um, I've got a hair dye. I want to dye my hair. I've had it for a couple of months because I haven't had the energy to do it. I'm looking forward to it and I know that I will get the energy and probably the next, I'm hoping the next month to do it. Try and plan your things to look forward to that you can control. Don't go too big. Don't just go, I want to go abroad next year. 
You've got to have things to look forward to every week and I have things to look forward to every day. Um, and then I, every day I've got things to look forward to, every week I've got things to look forward to, and then I've got some bigger things, like I was looking forward to my mum coming up. So I've got my strawberry gatto, going to the garden place, the little garden place, the minions. Um, I'm looking forward to vlogging. I've got some vlogs that I really wanna do, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'm really looking forward to PTYA, it's called some mum, which I'm doing right now, which I'm, I tried to do an afternoon session. The, oh, what time is it? Oh, I've got a meeting.